we build synchronizers based on this waiting time of, um, of getting out of metastability. So we're going to have asynchronous inputs. Every user interface has a, a user pressing buttons, you know, even on your smartphone or on your computer, pressing a keypad um, at times that, you know, are, are, are varying depending on the clock edge. So the synchronizer's goal is to make the probability of failure low. A synchronizer can never make the probability of failure zero. So here's our D, and we have some synchronizer here, and uh, then our output Q that we're sending to the system. So a synchronizer is built with two back-to-back flip-flops. And basically the first one is the sampling flip-flop. So this is sampling this metastable or this um, asynchronous input D. And now we're going to allow it to regenerate using the feedback from the flip-flop, regenerate for some amount of time, TC minus T setup between those two flip-flops, allow it to do that regeneration again of either, you know, moving up to the rail or moving down to the rail during that cycle time, really the cycle time minus the setup time. And so now our time that we're waiting, this T, instead of just being a random T, is our that waiting time that we're allowing it to regenerate is the cycle time minus the setup time over tau, and then we still have, so that we just substituted um, T or T weighting as TC minus T setup. And so now we can calculate this probability of failure for our, for our synchronizer. And we also have two, uh, two other measures, which is the probability of failure per second. So if every time we you know, press a button, we're gonna get some probability of failure, if we're pressing that button n times per second, we multiply that probability of failure times n per second and get the prob probability of failure per second. So for example, um, if we have um, you know, a dartboard and there's uh, you know, the block, anyway, there's some probability that I'm going to hit some, some, some region in the dartboard, maybe some you know, block region, then um, let's say that, that probability is 0 0.1, right, there's just that probability, then the probability of failure per second, if I, um, if I throw that dart, you know, five times per second, we have that times five, and we get 0 0.5 is the probability of failure per second. Failures per second, per second, and so how many seconds would it take? What's the mean time between failures? Well, if I have half of a probability of 0.5 failures per second, then one over that, it would, on average, it would take me two seconds to get a failure. So that's the mean time between, between uh, failures is one over the probability of failure per second. Or another example is if we toss a coin and we have, right, I want to see the probability of getting a head on the coin. Um, so that probability is, you know, half, right, half tails, half, you know, 50% chance of getting heads, 50% chance of getting tails. And let's say that I toss that, um, uh, you know, just once per second, then I have a probability of failure per second of 0.5 failures per second. So clearly, one over that, one over 0 0.5 failures per second is equal to two seconds per failure. So the mean time between failures for this example is two seconds. Here's an example synchronizer where we have two flip-flops. This is the sampling flip-flop, and this flip-flop is allowing it to regenerate between samples, either to the high rail or the low rail, um, because of the feedback in the in the flip-flop. And we have the parameters here, the cycle time, two nanoseconds, 500 megahertz frequency, um, T naught, tau, 
um, T setup and the number of events per second. So we can calculate the probability of failure and the probability of failure per second and the mean time between failures. We have our equations here and the mean time between failure is just one over that. We put our numbers in and we end up getting 5.6 times 10 to the minus 6, probability of failure, and multiply that by n to get the probability of failure per second, and 1 over this to get our mean time between, between failures, and it ends up being mean time between failures is 5 hours. So on average, the system will fail every 5 hours. Could be sooner, right? Could fail in 1 second. It could be later, could fail, you know, after a year. But on average, the, um, the system will fail every five hours. So you might ask the question, well, is that okay? You know, if it's my computer and it's failing every five hours, I am probably going to return it. Um, if it's, uh, you know, uh, you know, some, some, you know, toy that I'm, that I'm, my, I give to my kid who, you know, fails every five hours, and they turn on and off, you know, no safety hazard there. Maybe some frustration, but, but no safety hazard or, or some issue there. So it does depend on the application. So how would we drive this down even further? Well, we could put another flip-flop. So right, this Q is what's sending out to the system. We put another flip-flop there, flip-flop three. Well, now instead of waiting, you know, 1.9 nanoseconds, we're going to wait, wait twice that. We'll let it regenerate once, and then whatever it got to, it's going to keep regenerating there. And so that doubles that, but um, you can do the numbers on your own. The, uh, the effect is ex exponential. And so we can add flip-flops to um, increase that, that time we allow it to regenerate to either the high rail or the low rail. And then here's our system. Send it out to the system only after it's, after its high probability of being stable being a one or, or a zero.